Hey everyone, so we are here nerd stalking with Butter Cuts at Vatican Salon. So we're gonna get to know him a little bit better and ask him some questions and yeah, so we're gonna get started and we're gonna kinda get to know him. So give us a little bit of background about you. Um, so I've been in hair now for about two years. Uh, I built cell phone towers actually before I started doing hair. I did that for almost 10 years uh, and then got a little influence from my barber at the time. Uh, to decide maybe go to hair school. I uh, just wasn't happy with what I was doing, wasn't fulfilling my life and things I wanted to do. So I decided to save some money and quit my job and go to hair school. Um, I decided to go to Paul Mitchell right here in Costa Mesa. Um, awesome, awesome school, great learning leaders, awesome uh, experience through that place and um, really sparked my interest even more for doing hair. And then, you know, was lucky enough to get a job here with Pope at the Vatican and someone I've looked up to the entire time I went to hair school and all that stuff. So. It was really awesome to be able to get that opportunity and now be here working every day with her. Awesome. How long ago did you actually start school? Uh, I started school in November of 2015. Oh, so you're pretty new then yes. to the industry. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. And it definitely seems like you have created a nice little name for yourself already oh, yeah. within that short period of time. Yeah, I've done decently well from being out of school to now. So That's great. it's been awesome. It's truly a blessing. So. What do you kind of attribute that to? Um, it really had a lot to do with my learning leaders at Paul Mitchell and then getting in here with Pope um, You know, she's fully taken me under her wing and introduced me to all kinds of people giving me different opportunities and you know Just allowed me to grow a lot with my brand and my career So I attribute that to the people at Paul Mitchell and then here at Vatican. Very cool. Yeah um, So what was something so because you are such a new newer stylist you didn't graduate that long ago But right. with the journey that you have taken so far what would be something that you would tell yourself on the first day of cosmetology school? Relax and trust the process. I felt like I wasn't very skilled at cutting hair right away when I got into school and I feel like I was a little harder on myself than I should have been because it's all practice, repetition and you know learning different techniques and this and that but I was a lot harder on myself and made things a little stressful, more stressful than I should have. Um, so just relax and trust the process and uh, a big thing is to find someone that you look up to in the industry and try and model yourself after them. Ask people questions, you know, find someone that you really look up to and ask to work with them or, you know, help with them or whatever they've got going on because you learn a lot from other people in this industry and the knowledge that people can pass on to you is very, very important, so. Who were some people while you were in school that you looked up to? Uh, Rosal the Barber, Fern the Barber, uh, Popular Nobody, um, and Pope were like my top four influences. Uh, also the guys from Scorum in uh, the Netherlands. Awesome dudes, uh, people I really looked up to and really influenced my career so far. Did you know that you wanted to do men's hair or oh, yeah. barbering when you went to school? Uh, yeah, that's what I went to school for was to get my barbering license. I had an interest in color and women's hair and things like that, which is kind of why I chose Paul Mitchell so I could get a diverse training, but uh, I knew I wanted to focus in men's grooming. And so does Paul Mitchell Costa Mesa, they offer a barbering program? Yes, so they actually offer both cosmetology and uh, barbering as well as an esthetician course. Very and that's nice. their flagship school here in Costa Mesa, so it was really awesome to be there. Very cool, it seems like a lot of schools are starting to incorporate that barbering program yeah. now that you see men's hair and barbering becoming a lot more popular. Yeah, it's in the spotlight real big right now. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really nice to see that, that schools like Paul Mitchell are definitely starting to expand themselves to offer things right. like that now. And then they didn't go cheap on bringing educa educators in. Like they've got some of the biggest names in the industry, you know, working at that school, teaching people and the next generation of barbers to be coming through or getting great educations, not just on cutting hair, but like, how to be a good barber, like how to talk to your clients, how to influence your clients, how to stay true to your traditions and things like that. So it's an amazing, amazing thing to see going on. That's really awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So the people that you looked up to before, have you gotten a chance to work with them besides Pope? Um, I, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, with, um, I did do a, like a hair modeling thing for the Scorum guys uh, when they came out and did their little American tour, which was awesome. Those guys are awesome dudes. Um, I love their products as well. And then uh, Popular Nobody, Rosal the Barber and Fern. Uh, Fern's one of my good buddies. I talk to him on a weekly basis or so, you know. Uh, go hang out with him at his little spot, Dead Ends, which is an awesome little spot. Um, but I just work here locally with Pope and do my thing here. 
All right, well, guys, you heard him. He wants to get and do something with you, so. Yes. I'm hoping to see that at least you and Fern are gonna get together and make something magical happen. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'd love to do something with Fern. Goals, goals by the goals. end of the year, guys. Yes. Come on. <laughs> so, kind of talking about men's grooming and barbering a little bit. Some people will say that there is a difference between men's grooming and barbering. How do you feel about that? My opinion on it is, yeah, what they say with men's grooming is it's more of a stylist, not a barber that does men's hair. But I don't really feel like there's a big difference as long as you're passionate about what you're doing and, you know, can do the things that you want to do and do them well and have that passion for it, then it doesn't really matter what kind of license you have in my eyes. As long as you're doing what makes you happy and makes your clients happy, that's all that really matters. Yeah, definitely. That's how I feel about those things. That's awesome. Um, so, that you do focus on men's grooming, barbering, all of those things. What is a men's style that you love versus something that you would like to see go away? Things I'd like to see go away. The faux hawk. <laughs> I don't like the faux hawk. Uh, the top knot. Not a fan of the top knot. Um, I really do like the gentleman's cuts, pompadours, skin fades, stuff like that. Um, I really like doing the comb overs with the hard parts and the bald fade, something I really enjoy doing. Um, but yeah, the top knot's got to go. And <laughs> the faux hawks. Messy tops on top are cool, but I'm just not a big fan of the faux hawk. So if you had someone that came in that had a faux hawk or a top knot, how would you help them switch over into something different? It if just they depends. were just like dead set on that haircut. If they're style. dead set on it, then I'm gonna rock that haircut as best as I can. You know, I just did one on one of my buddies that he went from the comb over to kind of a faux hawk, which not my favorite thing. I'd like to see it gone, but you know, he really wanted it, so I just rock it as best as I can. You know, make it's all about making my clients happy. So yeah. if I can do the best haircut I can and my client leaves happy, then it doesn't really matter what they get, as long as they're happy. Would there be a way though that you would stylize and tra help transition that hairstyle into something else? Yeah, I, with his little faux hawk, I kind of did it a little more off to the side and a little more textured off to the side type of deal, but not so mohawk faux hawky. <laughs> but um, yeah, it really just comes down to what my clients are asking for and you know how I can make them happy. Yeah, I think that's really where a lot of that lies is like yeah. what we can do for them, but at yeah. the same time, like helping guide them to make sure that they look yeah. their best exactly as well. Right. And so, kind of going off of that. If there are there any looks from the '90s or early 2000s boy band era that you would bring back? I don't know about bring back. I think a lot of those hairstyles should stay there. <laughs> if you had to choose one. <laughs> oh God. Um, I don't know. I wasn't really. I never really was into the boy band stuff. So. Maybe some frosted tips. No, or... <laughs> no, that stuff needs to stay there. I growing up, I was like West Coast gangster rap, so. That's what I listen to. I steered clear of all the boy bandy type of haircuts type stuff. So uh, I like the Caesars and stuff like that, the 4 a.m. fades and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. So for people that may not know exactly what those are, describe those a little so bit. So a Caesars like more of a fade all around the top part of the head and stuff like that and more a little bit of weight left here in the front. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So a favorite styling product that you couldn't live without, what is something that you use personally on a daily basis or something that you use on your clients on a daily basis? Uh, I really like stuff like this, uh, let's see, we've got the Holy Blacks Matte Clay. That one's awesome if you want to matte, some, something matte, not shiny, it's awesome, it's got a great hold to it. Also the Hans de Foucault Claymation is another really good one that's a matte, it's got a great hold to it. And then if you're looking for something with a little more shine, I love Ruzel's products. Those are the Scorm guys. This is my favorite one. It's their medium grease pomade. It's awesome. It smells wonderful. has a great shine to it, a great hold to it. It's by far one of my favorite. I use it on myself and almost all my clients. So great products. So what would be a tool that you couldn't live without? My straight razor. Yeah. I love my straight razor. I use my straight razor on everything. So that's huge. And then my shears. I got all Hanzo shears. Um, so. Gotta rep the Hanzos. Are you, so you are starting to work with Hanzo a little bit. Doing a little right? bit of stuff with Hanzo now. So what kind of stuff can we see? Um, we will be going to Paul Mitchell San Diego uh, in the next couple days. Um, 
towards the middle of the month, I think the 17th, we'll be down there. And then uh, we have something coming up in Pasadena as well. Uh, we're also doing the Orange County Barbers Barber Bash Battle on Memorial Day, which I think is the 30th. And then we're also doing the Humble Project. Uh, Pope and our other barber here, uh, Lowski, will be doing all that with Hanzo. Um, it's like a women's empowerment type of uh, event with Hanzo that we'll be doing on the 13th or 14th? I'm not sure. Coming up in the next week or two. So those are a couple of events that we have coming up. Where can people find out more information about that? Um, Hanzo, their uh, Instagram website, Pope and myself's website, or Instagrams. Um, we'll be posting more stuff like that for those events. The Paul Mitchell stuff is exclusive to the students at Paul Mitchell, but um, those things, and then Orange County Barbers on Instagram, their uh, Instagram has all the information for their event coming up on Memorial Day. Awesome, well, everybody should definitely keep an eye out and make sure that they definitely get some great education definitely. and go to some events and yes. do some networking and meet you guys and Very much get so. involved. Um, and so, kind of going back to your time at Paul Mitchell, you had, sounds like a really great experience oh, yeah. with some of your learning leaders and the people that you were there with. Um, are you getting more involved with them as well? Um, I haven't really gotten too much more involved with them. I would like to in the future, um, possibly a little farther down in my career. I'd maybe like to even teach with them at their school, uh, but that's definitely something that I, I'm keeping in mind. I've got a couple friends that go there and, you know, people that have even written me and said, you know, someone I look up to and your journey through school is something that I really relate to. So it's it's really nice and humbling to see people see my journey and, you know, look up to that. And it's nice to be able to offer my information and stuff back to those people. And, you know, that's something I really enjoy. So I'd like to pursue that in the future. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that you'll always be behind the chair or do you see yourself kind of going towards more of a permanent educator role eventually? Oh, I'll always be behind the chair. I love being behind the chair. It's awesome. I feel like I worked so hard to get here that, you know, maybe I won't be here full time behind the chair, but I'll always be behind the chair. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever want to break out into doing more um, editorial work one day? I would or? love to. You know, one thing that they taught us at Paul Mitchell was say yes to everything. So any opportunities that I can get, maybe work on a movie set or editorial stuff or anything like that I'm open to, I would love any opportunity. So I'd like to get into doing more education and stuff like that, maybe work for with a couple different brands and be able to travel and do some of that stuff. That's definitely on my radar. Yeah. Up. I think that's definitely something that at Hair Nerds we try to not push, but definitely have people be aware about is like never saying no to an opportunity. Oh, yeah. Never having to, don't ever close any doors off. Don't no. say yes to everything. Yes. Do as much as you can. Don't get stuck. Yeah. Feeling like you have to be in one spot. Like exactly. there are so many different opportunities. Yeah, there's so much going on in this world with especially just in the hair world. Like yeah. so many different people doing so many different things that like there's so many opportunities that just don't get stuck in one area. Don't yeah. feel like you're you have to be in one area. Explore all the different opportunities that are out there because there's a lot out there. Yeah. So like what would be some words of wisdom that you would give to people who may might feel like they're getting kind of stuck in where they are? Step outside your comfort zone, you know. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because that's the only way you're really going to grow in this industry is doing things that you're not comfortable with, taking education on something that maybe isn't your passion exactly. Like if you're a colorist, do some cutting classes. If you're a cutter, do some color classes. You know, just diversify your portfolio and your background so that way, you know, you're available and ready to do any opportunity that comes up for you. Would you? Is there anything that you feel like you are kind of scared of doing that you want to pursue? I want to do more color work. I'm very nervous with color. I feel like blasting it out to, you know, banana peel yellow and then putting some crazy colors in I'm cool with, but you know, learning color formulations and stuff like that is something I'm definitely interested in. I'd like to pursue a little more in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. Do you ever think that you guys will ever bring, bring color in here to the shop? Um, we have certain restrictions due to our shop's location that prevents us from doing color right now. So possibly in the future, if we open another location or something, I would love to do something like that. Kind of expand it a little yeah, bit more to be exactly. a little bit more rounded. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. But uh, currently right now we're we're not doing any color in the shop. So Yeah, I always wondered that, like how how do barber shops like if there's different like licensing things? Well it's like, not about a licensing thing, it's just our location is a work live space mm -hmm. and because of that the homeowners association doesn't allow us to do chemical processes in here. So yeah. things like that kind of limit us. But you know, everyone in here is fully trained in that stuff and loves to do stuff like that. So 
I, I'd like to pursue that a little more in my career. Very cool. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's really fun to be able to like kind of know those things that scare oh, you yeah. and then know that like I'm gonna step out of my comfort zone yeah. one day and like really. Now something myself. Pope's always really said is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So like just any opportunity, anything that and she's awesome about it. Like anything I wanna learn or have a question about or an event I wanna attend or anything, she's fully behind all of it. So it makes it awesome having a boss that's a friend, a boss, and a mentor, you know? Yeah. It's really great. I think that's so important to be able to find someone who you really can connect with and yeah. that will actually teach you something. Oh yeah. So many times people get stuck with situations where they have a mentor but they're really not feeling like they're getting the full benefit of oh, it. Right. And so I think it's really important to be able to have that connection with someone. Yeah, definitely. And actually... I, I don't even feel like I'm at work ever. I feel like I'm hanging out with my friends, laughing and doing what we love every day, you know? Yeah. Come in and just laugh all day. Yeah. So, anybody wants to come by the shop and laugh, come by. Let them know where the location is. Uh, we're downtown, or not downtown. We're in Santa Ana, across the street from Main Place Mall, uh, 3009 North Main Street, Santa Ana, California. It's a very cool location, guys. Definitely come and check it out. Come in, get your hair cut, hang out. They're very yes. cool. Lots of fun here at the shop. Yes, I've had fun. I've been here for a little while, and it's definitely been yeah. just pretty fun so far. It's been awesome, <laughs> yeah. She's great to be around. So kind of speaking of education and like mentoring and stuff, what would be three things that you would not miss this year? Um, Events, education, whatever. So let's see, the concept tour that uh, Diego, Famos, and Julius Caesar are doing is something I want to be at. Uh, they're going to do a tour through Canada and the U.S. West Coast. That's something real big to be at. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, there's the classes that Pope has going on with Hanzo that are real good to be at. And then the Orange County Barbers thing that they have going on on Memorial Day is going to be another real good one. Are so, you going to be attending all of these? Yes. So I if you guys want to stock Buttercuts, definitely make sure that you're going to these events and coming and saying hello. Yes. I will be taking the class. I'm hoping to be taking the class for the concept tour. Those guys are awesome. Guys I look up to and really would like to learn from them. So I'm going to make sure I'm at the LA class for that for sure. Nice. Yeah. And so... Um, where can people find out more information about you and about the shop and like where um, can people stalk you? Um, you where come do you get to the coffee shop. on Sundays? Come to like, the shop. <laughs> we get our coffee either right here at Coffee Bean or next door at uh, Starbucks. We are having to be right in the middle, equal walking distance to both. So we hang out at both of those spots or I live down in Newport Beach on the peninsula so I'm hanging out down there or at the shop here. So Or my Instagram at Buttercuts on Instagram. Find nice. me there. And then what's the shop's website? Um, we are at BTCNSA on Instagram or Vatican Barbershop on Facebook. Very cool. And if anyone wants to make an appointment, they can uh, do that yeah, we online. We do all online booking. It's BTCN.Reserva.com. And then both Pope, myself, and our other uh, Barber Lowski are on there. Awesome. Well, yes. this has been really fun. Thank you so much for allowing awesome. us to Thank have. Thank you for doing to this. To be here. Yeah, yeah. This was awesome. Um, and if you guys want to find out any more information, again, follow him on Instagram, follow the shop on Instagram and Facebook. You all, you have a Facebook as well. Yeah. Buttercuts. Buttercuts. On Facebook. On Facebook. B-U-T-T-E-R-C-U-T-T-Z. -T -T yeah. And don't be afraid to reach out and ask any kind of questions. Um, it's really nice having someone that's kind of a newer stylist in the industry to be able to have other people that are kind yeah. of new. To any questions, to... anything, just hit yeah. me up. I'm always down. Yeah. Well, we will definitely be seeing more of you, and thank you. And anyone that has not seen the Hair Nerds Hotel Haircut video, um, it is on YouTube under Rubble Girl Barbers, and you can definitely see Buttercuts in that video cutting some hair, and it was an incredible... That was awesome. It was, it was so an incredible, much fun. Yeah, it was yeah, so great. That and was hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of that kind yes, of stuff. Yes, very so. soon. Yeah, well, thank you so much again. Thank you. And this has been really awesome. And everybody, you can check this out um, on Facebook or at thehairnerds.com. Check us out.